All right, Birdman here. All right, guys, here's the deal. It's been a while since I made a, a video of cooking. I am not the one doing the cooking. My mother-in-law is. I told you guys I was going to eventually give you a video on authentic fish salad. And that's what we're doing here with my mother-in-law. And re in, a, in a moment, I'm going to I'm going to hear her speak, but you get shrimps, you clean them, you devein them, you got a small pot of boiling water, like a saucepan, you got a big pot of boiling water, you got contraband scongeli, because you got to know people on Long Island to get this shit, forget about it what I had to go through to get this, then you got octopus, I got to go over to uh, Stu Lennon's and get that. Then there's calamari with the tentacles and the tubes clean, ready to go. And a shitload of celery for now. So, what we're going to end up doing here is my mother in law also got the imitation crab meat, which came out of also Stu Leonard's. And you'll see olive oil from Filippo Biro. Be Barrio. Now listen, you already, all you guys already know about me. I don't buy olive oil because the family produces it. You know, because this is very important, you know. You got to have real olive oil and then fake olive oil. <laughs> My mother-in-law tells me that the real olive oil fucks up her recipe because it has a high smoke, po a low smoke point. So she needs an oil with a lower smoking point. This is the next secret to the ingredient. If you guys don't know what this is, then you might as well go kill yourselves. I'm told by my mother-in-law that that goes there. It's mandatory. If you don't use the frickin' pork, you're gonna fuck up this recipe. All right, the mother-in-law name is uh, Lena, and uh, that's why that's whose hands you see there now. And there's the octopus right there. And you can't feel bad for the octopus, you know. You just gotta put him in the water and let him suffer a little bit, you know, just like that. You know, it rubs the water on the skin, or else it gets to see see what's happening there. Nice. See how it's curling at the bottom? Yes. It's like going to the spa and getting hot rocks put on you. And then she grabs a spoonful. Let me take it over. I'll take it over there. No big deal. There you go. So I take the scongeli there, my mother-in-law puts it in the pot. And did you put anything in the pot besides the important cork? Nope. Nothing. It's just the octopus, water. the water, the cork. We're done with this, right? Yes. We spill this out. All right, what else, what else we got going on? So in a different pot, well, the, that's like a saucepan, you know, a small saucepan. You got a bunch of shrimp. Like I said, my mother-in-law cleaned the vein them. There's no salt in there, right? You can talk to Just me. Just plain water. Just plain, plain water. Plain water. Once they come to, they become pink, they're done. Okay, you hear that? When they become pink, they're finished. You don't cook that much. Do you need a ladle or something that will scoop anything out a little bit? Oh uh, yeah, well, I'll do this in two minutes. Let them cover. Okay, so then cover, them. cover the yeah. pot. The octopus is in here with the spongili. The shrimp is in here by itself, starting to cook. Two minutes. Mm, gotta wash the hands. What else we got going on? Now we just want the shrimps, they come up to a boil, remove them. This is going to take a couple, at least 20, 25 minutes okay. to become nice and tender. It takes a little longer. But these, once they, see, they're already turning pink. Okay. It takes two minutes for the shrimps. Once they come to a boil, I remove them, put the crab meat, just to give them a little clear, a cleaning, like, you know. And that's it, and they're done. Hi. It's just to, hi, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, this meal. Okay. And we'll be good. All right, so... You're gonna boil these out, cook them up, get them out. Yes, and then we'll put that. Then you're gonna take the, yeah. the imitation crab meat and put it in the same thing, same in water. the same water, and cook that up a little bit. Yeah, then you're gonna two remove minutes, it. Two, two, two minutes, not even. 
two minutes. Yeah. And then what happens? And then we'll start building the... Okay. So the okay, next so. time you see the camera come on... Come on when everything gets together. The shrimp would have been out. The imitation crab meat would have been out. And the octopus will be out. So we'll return in a minute. Okay. So the octopus... See how it's curling over? It's curling over because it got tanned on one side and now it wants to tan evenly so it turns its legs over. You understand? And the cork, the cork acts as a tension barrier so the sun doesn't burn it on one side. My friend. <laughs> it makes it tender. It helps with the cooking. So it's like, it makes it tender. It helps to cook faster. All right, so the theology is that a cork in the water increases tenderization and cook time. Of the octopus and the scongelis. Of the of octopus and the scongelis. She pulled the shrimp out. The crab meat is in there. And now she's, she's going to twist that up. It's not even two minutes and it comes out. Okay. It's clean because it's already cooked. Right, because, exactly. Imitation crab meat can actually be eaten straight out of the package. Exactly. Because it's pre-cooked and mm -hmm. um, it's imitation for a reason. And now we're just waiting, right? Yeah, just wait two minutes, take it out, and we'll be done. Okay. And this is going to take a little longer, and then we'll put the whole thing together. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera off again, and then I'm going to clean the celery and put it to the side for her. The calamari is basically thawed and then we're waiting for that stuff and then we'll be back in a minute. Alright guys, so as I told you when we came back there is the imitation crab meat with the shrimp. You may not see the shrimp as whole because it's been cut up but like right there, that, that's a piece of shrimp. You got this big ass, look, this is how big this bowl is. So you guys get an idea. My mother-in-law is chopping up garlic. And uh, notice uh, how it's done. You know, without fear of being cut, mind you. Italian style. Yeah, but this is the way things are done. And if you don't do them this way, and you mess up this recipe, I'm telling you right now that it ain't my fault because my mother-in-law showed you guys exactly what to do. Now, the octopus is still boiling. In this pot are the tubes. Floor, can you come and um, lift it? Yeah, and take the spoon and just show them one body. So there's some tentacles, and that's the tube. The tube is the body of the of the squid, the calamari, mm -hmm. and that's it. So that just boils out. Same water used for the shrimp and for the imitation crab meat is the same water being used for the calamari. Nothing's been added to it. Okay. It gets a better taste. What'd you say? It, it, Tastes better because all the flavor of the other. And there's the octopus, there's the cork. The cork must not leave. Tell me something. Tell me about this recipe and where it came from. Okay. When I met my husband, he, go, he said to me, I'll do all the cooking. So he was the cook of the house. Hi, Hi. everybody. So Christmas came around. He said, I'm going to make the fish salad. So I said, Okay, what is it? Never, never had it. So he goes, We are going to get all the stuff octopus and. Uh, Calamari, scongelli. I said, okay. He goes, I'll do the cooking and you put it all together in the end. I said, okay. I don't know. Oops. So he did that. And once he put it all together, and it was the most tasteful, delicious thing I ever had in my life. 
So thank God I watched him doing it. Because now my kids, my husband's not here anymore. God rest, rest his soul. soul. May I rest in peace. So my my kids say, Mom, what's the deal? Do you know to do the fish salad? I say, yeah, thank God I watched Daddy do it, and I'm doing it. So it's a tradition that I will not change for anything. My son will ask me to get this done, and it's my pleasure. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank to you. Get it done. So you. So you guys understand, like, there's more to having delicious food yes. in the family. It's a matter of um, it being passed down. Also, you know, I've documented my mother in a similar fashion. You know, there's certain things that you cannot learn in a cookbook or by looking at Google and saying I'm going to copy Emerald Glossy step by step. It doesn't, there's just some stuff. There's no way to articulate that you're going to cut the garlic in a certain way. It was like that, that movie. Remember that it was like that gangster movie where <laughs> he was in jail. He, he was, was in like, jail, exactly. Was and he it was like right, right. That's the one. It was where they're um, slicing the garlic with a razor. Exactly. That that's his method of madness. You know, <laughs> it's you can't write that in the freaking cookbook. No, you can. There's no way. right. So these things that are going on with the, with the way the garlic is chopped up and. Um, this is an example of what's going to happen to the calamari tube, the body. You cut it just with a knife and you're going to get these circles. I'm going to show you something else that was going on while the cameras were off. This right here is celery. I washed it and then I chopped it up. I happen to like celery, I like carrots too. Okay, so I showed my mother-in-law and said, Lena, is that enough or you need more celery? Because I got a lot more celery. She goes, I need leaves. Said, what do you mean? Said, I need you to take the middles out of the celery. I need the leaves chopped up. So, is that enough leaves now? Yes, perfect. Okay, so check it out. So you understand the comparison. That is a big ass bowl and that's the next size under. Two different sets, this one's taller. In a cookbook, you know, here or you, you know, they could definitely write, use celery heart leaves, right? I wouldn't have used them. In most cookbooks, really wouldn't have specified that. Because we, as Americans, and it's just a fact of life, is we discard this. We don't eat it. We eat this part. Anyway, my father-in-law, well, I knew the man, and I have nothing but the nicest thing to say about him, because he was the absolute last of that generation, that Mohican. It's the generation that had balls. Something millennials don't understand. But I'm not going to get into it. He's gone. And we're carrying on and documenting that which he told my mother-in-law. And now my mother-in-law is teaching, teaching to me and my wife. And through this video, my in my uh, brother-in-laws and my sister-in-law and the rest of the family will have a shot to have a documented session of how things are done. I see you moving. When you're moving, whoa, what'd you do there? I just took the little to see if it's done. How do you know it's done? Oh, taste it. Oh, you eat it. <laughs> you hear that? Did you, get, did you hear that? How do you know it's done? You eat it. Is it done? It still needs more? Well, but these, but these things, once you put the vinegar and the lemon, tenderize them. You hear that? That's the way it is. That's why the next day it tastes 100% better. You got that? So, to recap, my mother-in-law says that 
If it's a little al dente, as long as it's cooked, but a little al dente. Yeah. It's the lemon and the vinegar that will make them soft. So basically, when you add the acid to the game, mm -hmm. it'll finish the tenderization. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's why I like, what are you to, doing? I like to make these like the day before. What are you doing? And we'll just, you know. You make it the day before and? And but the next day when you're going to serve them, everything will be perfect. hundred. All right. So what, she, so what she's saying, I already know what she's saying. How long you cook it. They're never going to get tender than this. Right. So what she's saying is cook time is one thing, you know, cook it so that you don't get sick. Exactly. However, this dish isn't complete when the cooking and the assembly is done. This dish is complete tomorrow. The next day, it goes when it goes in the fridge. And you put lemon and vinegar and everything. And it, once it, oh, you put all the condiment in it, like salt and pepper and garlic and oil and vinegar and lemon. And we'll do the rest of the cooking by absorbing all the, the, the ingredient, the taste, and the fish salad will be perfect. There you go. So. You heard it. I didn't make it up. This is the way it's being taught. And this is the way you guys can duplicate it if your heart desires. Okay. So now that these are done, I'm going to take them out and cut them in the little strips. Because right now it's the whole... You want a tongue? Is yeah. your life? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a tongue right there. This one? Any, any one. Whatever one you want. That looks good. I even have one of them. Yeah, I know, the little scoop, but it's okay. Every time you go to a restaurant, then you get, uh, like when I get fried calamari, because the boys, they know that I like that. And I said, whatever happened to the, the rest of the calamari? Why you only have the circle? Like, they never have these guys. The tentacles. Yeah, they don't. So Frank goes, mom, you're the only one you complain about this. I said, but it's the best part. Well, yeah. I agree with you. I actually like the tentacles also, yeah. and there's never enough of them. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, if there's one left at the bottom of the fish salad, mm -hmm. I might have to kill somebody so I can get the last <laughs> piece. So I'm giving you all fair warning. You see one left in the bowl, you better not even look at it. Like I said, I'm glad I you know, I learned because it's really good. And then, you know, you enjoy it. You remember so many things when he was, you know, he was making it. Oh, yeah. And everything comes to, you remember. Like, sometimes you, I mean, you don't forget, but still, certain things, they get out of your, but when the holiday comes around and you know you're going to be making this, it's like he's here with us, making it. Right. Exactly. And that's what it's supposed to be. Right. Perfect. We, you include them in, in the yeah, holiday. You no matter what. They, no matter what, they were us every single day. But in these things, it's, you know. You, uh, what do you want? You want a cutting board? No, no. Uh, wait a minute. I got a cutting uh, board right this. there and the bigger knife right there. You couldn't use the bigger knife? No, I like this one. You like a smaller yeah, knife? Like okay. I'm good. This goes here, this goes here. I'm gonna come around this way.
All right, so she's taking the tubes, which is basically the body, the main cavity of the calamari, and as you can see, she's cutting them down. You're right over there. She's cutting them down into like half inch, you know, three eight of an inch maybe rings. rings. I know Frank is going to be jealous <clears throat> until I call him and tell him that I got fish salad and I'm not sending any to Brooklyn. I'm not sending him any. No, he said he wants the, the, sauce. the sauce. I ain't sending him no sauce either. <laughs> I'm going to send him a video of me eating it, but he's not going to get none. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you... I've been around Italians all my life. I grew up in the Bay Ridge, Bensonhurst areas of Brooklyn. And you don't get more Italian than that. And what happens is, all right, so that's the first of the calamari meeting the shrimp and the imitation crab meat. You don't, uh, See, the way he cooked, the Sicilian people cook 100% different than where I come from. That's why I never knew what was a fish salad, because we don't. We do eat a lot of fish, but never like this, like put all these ingredients together. Like we used to have like mussels, all that stuff. I didn't know, I didn't even know clams what it was until I came here. It's different. But he liked what I cooked, and I like the same thing with the Sunday sauce. The way I used to make it was 100% different than he did. And when I saw him the first time make the Sunday sauce, I said, Paolo, what are you doing? He goes, I'm making Sunday sauce. I said, yeah? He said, but why are you boiling the meat? He goes to take all the bad stuff away from it. Like the meatballs, I'll fry like the meatball, I'll fry it. He used to fry them too. But the meat that I'm gonna put in, like the sausage, I'll boil them first. And then while my sauce is going on, I'll, you know, I'll put, I don't cook them all, all through, just to remove all the other, you know, whatever it's in the meat. Right, so you, you're talking about the stuff that floats up to the top of the exactly. pot? Exactly, exactly. So that's the reason, and I say, okay. So my way of making them, the, the, the barese way, it's you put your onions, your oil, and then you, start, you make them golden brown, and then you put your meat in there, and you make it brown too, and then you put your tomato sauce. But his way was different, and I say, you know what? I like that way. So the way I make my sauce now, the way you guys eat that sauce, it's that way. It's his way. And then, and then another time, the thing that surprised me, I saw him putting potatoes in the sauce. I said, why are you putting potatoes? He goes, because it makes the sauce thicker. I said, okay. I said, that will work. And that's... He, uh, so, see, what, what I'm get, what I'm understanding is that the man knew what the ingredient did. Right. But maybe didn't know the science, you right. know? Yes. Like potato is starchy. Yes, and that's why it makes the sauce thicker and tastier. And uh, um, and then when you put your tomatoes, some tomato a little bit of more as acidity has uh -huh. in it. And I see, I'm looking at him, I say, why are you putting sugar in your sauce? He goes, well, to take the bitterness away. I said, one more thing. Thank God, like I said, thank right. God I watched him. Right. He was amazing. Like so him. one second on that. So you took the tentacles and you did just what cut now? Just a little bit. Uh, I just cut, yeah. you, the, hold on. See? The tentacles. You're not cutting them. No, just uh, any hard, way you want. Uh, you're not cutting them across. No, you're cutting you just, them long. You yeah. want to leave them long. Yes. And then. And they go into the into the mix there. Build in the, the side. Yeah. What I was trying to tell you guys just before was, growing up where I grew up, we had. Diversity all over the place, but it was led with 
people of the Mediterranean and its cuisine, in particular the Italians, Greeks, um, we had German influence, uh, Hungarian, a lot of European influence where I grew up. And the marks of a non-Italian looking for validity to a good tasting cuisine. Nothing in there, right? No. You want a scoop? No, let's see. No, I think that there's nothing. Uh, let's see this guy here, what's going on with him. So now we have to... It's a little bit harder. So you, you're going to use a scissor on this one? Yeah, just to cut it a little bit of one of those. Tentacles? Mm -hmm. okay. Well, your plastic fork went in there. Oh, so it's presumably pretty Careful. tender. Yeah, yeah, hot, hot, it's hot. Going hot. There. <laughs> a little bit of me. <laughs> yeah, you saw that, right? <laughs> It's over here somewhere. There oh, you go. Oh, wow. First shot. So, when I was trying... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on, uh, you know what? Hold on. I don't need this water anymore. Hold on, hold on. Here. Take that. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Disappear. My wife, my mother-in-law goes in one shot with a freaking tongue <laughs> and nails it. I'm in there with a ladle, I can't find it. What the heck? What did you do? It disappeared. It's so tender, disappeared. I don't know what. Let me just drain it. Come, in the sink. So I'll, let me just finish that statement. Growing up in the area that I grew up, you know, we who weren't Italian, there it is, had markers, you know. We, there was things that we would look for to, to realize if the person cooking knew what they were doing. And we, the markers we would use would be their chicken cutlets. Yeah. You know, not every Italian, how's that? It's good? Okay. Perfect. So basically, as you saw, the way to basically understand if you reach the appropriate tenderness while boiling, other than temperature, as you, could, as you guys saw, we didn't use thermometers to check it. She poked it with a plastic fork, and the plastic fork poked it. Octopus, if not tender, then it won't. Octopus is tough. But, you know, like I said, chicken cutlets was one way to test, you know, the person's ability in the kitchen. So now we have and there you go, this quinjili. That's another, that's, that's conch. You know, it comes out of a conch shell. Yeah. If you notice, she's going after it with a, with a plastic fork. I got metal ones, but for effect, if the plastic fork is able to get through that. I mean, it's done then it's done it's done for real because that too is very tough chicken cutlets was one and you know that's how's that one it's still a little tough but like i said with a lemon it'll break down it'll go down so chicken cutlet chicken palm you know you had lasagna but if you really you know besides the chicken cutlets you wanted to know it the person knew what they were doing in the kitchen. You would use another gauge of a, of a dish called zuppa de pesh, and you would also use another gauge, or at least I did, it was pasta fajol. Mm -hmm. If you were able to find a person who can nail these dishes, they more or less can cover every angle of the Italian cuisine, you know? 
you can't you can't say pizza because you're not going to build a pizza inside of a house oven, you know. So you just can't use that. This is too bit. Okay, why is that part separated? Um, uh, it's the see that long. Did you notice there was like that long thing? Uh, I'll show you another. Here, take the plate with you. There you go. See that tail? See right here? This thing? This tail end? Yeah. So okay. I don't like that. That's got like, it's like the attached to the, like an intestine, let's say. Okay. So that's, I removed that and I cleaned the inside. Like, remember what the guy was saying? There might be sand in right. it? Right. So that's what it, it will be. But there's no sand because I already, you Checked would have known right away if there was any sand. It would have been like, you know, crunchy. Gritty. Yes, exactly. Got it. Alright, so now, the octopus are down. This is a big one. You see how big on there? Right. See? And just so you guys know, this squingeal particularly didn't come from Brooklyn. And finding it on Long Island, it was like contraband. I will not divulge the <laughs> place exactly. where I got it from, but I will tell you that the fish store that sold me this sold me this out of their private stock. And it was very nice of them. Mm -hmm. And the only way I can give them credit is one day I'll feature their food on a video. See? Okay, so that tail piece you don't See? like. It's got a cavity in it. Mm -hmm. See, is that, is that knife not sharp enough? No, it's good. Just me. See? Like all the way down there. So I cut it around it and leave uh, whatever. You know, the part that I don't like. I do this all the time, so. See like that little tail? Right. That's what's at, once it's inside the shell. Right. That's what, it's like umbilical cord. Do you understand? That you, you get food out of it. So I don't like it and I leave it. I leave it okay. out. Okay. So, you know. All right, so. Certain parts of the animal, unfortunately. Some people they do like it, but will be discarded because my mother-in-law says it's not. That's my preference. And that's that. And I if you guys don't like that, too fucking bad. It's <laughs> fine. You just look. You have to pay attention to whatever you cut. In. This seems okay. It's the same thing like snail. I love snail because that's why I ate it when I was young. Well, yeah, conch is like a large, a large es escargot. Exa yeah. Exactly. And we used to go, when it rained in Italy, we used to go on the field with a bucket and we used to go get the, the, the snails. snails from the artichokes plants. Right. And that's what, you know, when it rained, they will come out. So we used to literally eat them by bucket. My mother used to leave them outside overnight like cure them and then boil them with the mint and garlic and she used to give us a needle she sits down for hours we used to eat them so what do you mean cured them outside that like, she would salt them no no she no she would put them in a bucket put a cover it over it and leave them out overnight so they let the snail the little will come up the head will come up so that's how you know once you cook you put them in the hot water with the garlic and mint once you put them in there they stay out like none of them they will go all the way inside like the little, that's what you you're gonna eat so then she used to sit us down get a needle give us a needle we used to get the needle eat the thing and we used to eat it and it was like a you know now you give it to these kids they were, what are you crazy well yeah it's a del it's actually it's, a delicacy yes. and um you know when you do go out and you and you're able to find it on a menu yes, yes. it's not um cheap no one it's not cheap when i first came from italy this was i was young I was very young. So my, I think I was pregnant Mary, my daughter Mary. So we went to a Chinese restaurant and on the menu there was snails. So oh, I said to my sister Nina, oh my gosh, she goes, no, Lena, if you want to have them, you know, because I was pregnant. 
She goes, have them, don't worry about it. So we're sitting down, the guy, I order, the guy brings me the dish, and this, at the table next to me, the wife looks at me and she goes, ooh, she goes like this. The only thing I did, step, stood up, my belly was up to here, and I said, it's not me, she wants them. You gonna do anything about it? She goes, I'm sorry, she goes, I'm sorry. I said, yeah, it's food. If you don't have anything else, you will eat it, believe me. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a it's, taste to everything. It, 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 it's a prime example of food that was left for poor people, peasantry. Exactly. We didn't care. We loved you know, it. Now has become a delicacy. Exactly. Come on. I had right. it. You know, because I had to eat it because I didn't have anything else. And it would fill my stomach. I didn't care. But, you know, now you got to pay. Meanwhile, we used to go and take them, you know, for free. Come on. It's okay. It's good. These are good you know, memories you have, and you appreciate everything else that come up, comes along. Okay. So three pieces of conch. Yep. Squingili. Yeah. Get you a substantial amount yep. of and meat. This, yeah, it would have been double if you were like you. You see the way he had them really, really thin sliced? Right. But the, you know, you cannot thin slice. You want to know what you yeah. eating. So. He's thin slicing it for exactly. commercial delivery yeah, exactly. where you're cutting it for family dinner. Yes. There's a difference to, mm -hmm. to the cut. Okay, so that meets the rest of the party. And they're all gonna become one big family. Now we're going for the octopus. All right, let me, let me, let me clean this first. I wanna show you guys something while she's doing that. Look at the garlic we were talking about earlier. This is cut. <laughs> On, in her hand, not on a board. Yes. I think even Paulie with his razor would be kind of jealous. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I wasn't jealous. Oh, right, no. Nah. This. What do you need? What do I do with my soup over here? Okay. You want another one? Can I flip it over? Yeah. Flip it over. Okay. Alright, now. You can see I've got like, the skin already. Okay, so the tentacles are obviously removed from the main body cavity. It's so tender, it's unbelievable. I'm telling you, one little cork will... There you go. And then it starts becoming like one inch long pieces or so. The thicker you get, the less you make the cut, you know?
Well, the knife is like it's a tender there, like a butter. Mm. If it's not sharp enough, I got you another oh, knife. Look at the sharp it is. It's like mm, here. All right, so now we're going in the party with the octopus. Notice how I didn't give you guys any measurements of pounds, you know? I didn't do it intentionally because... See, so this is uh, the eye of uh, whatever. Yeah, so this is the beak of the octopus that she's removing. Yes. You know, it's found underneath the hood. It's between the head. It's like the neck. Yeah. So, I didn't give you any... Measurement. Measurements because my mother in law didn't give me any. We went to the store and it was like this exactly like this give me a pound and a half of shrimp. Okay, so I ordered that because I need an octopus. They didn't tell me two pounds, one pound, three pounds, ten pounds. I need an octopus. Okay, get an octopus. You know, we went. She, yeah, she, she, you know, the package of imitation crab meat, crab meat, it was one package. It wasn't like, obviously it's weighed when they sell it to you, but she didn't say to me, because, you know, we went together, she didn't say I need a pound or two pounds. You saw what happened? I need a package of imitation crab meat. So it's, assumingly, and we're going to get a confirmation from my mother-in-law, there are no measurements for this part. No. It's depend how many people you have, and you go by eye. It's, you know, a person knows if you're going to have 20 people, you need more than a, I mean, if you're going to have a 25 people, let's say, you need more than a pound and a half of uh, shrimps, you know? Right. So it's by you, your own person, you know how many people you could feed with this much. But look at this. Put it all together, it becomes... It's a lot of food. It's a lot of food. But what happens is I'm gluttonous because my <laughs> mother-in-law only makes it once a year. <laughs> And then I have to share it with 20 other people. <laughs> I'm not sharing this with no fucking body. <laughs> but um, all jokes aside, I guess it's safe to say that for whatever reason, you don't want a lot of calamari. You can get less, less. of it. Whatever you like more, you can put more. You can put more, you know? So um, what, yeah. what do you got going on? So now whatever's in here, you remove it. Okay. And then you just clean it out. And you cut it, whatever it's there. Whatever you want. It's like this thing, so you don't need it. So take it out. Okay. It's in the head. So you know, it's like going back to high school. And when you did, when you, you guys, most most of you guys remember in high school, you, di you dissected a frog. And you thought it was the end of the world. It wasn't the end of the world. You're gonna keep on doing it. Yeah, because if you're going to survive and you're going to eat, you're going to have to cut things up. Even if you are, even if you decide to become a vegan, you're going to have to cut things up. So, that's that. So, now she's basically in the hood, in, in the head, and she's removing the things which she proclaims undesirable. <laughs> she just wants the meat, everything else from what I'm noticing will be removed. That's it. Whatever it's, you don't, you know, want it to be in there, don't. It's not a big deal. Everything else is fine. Okay, so that's going to go to the chopping block, and it's going to get chopped up, and then watch your finger. Yeah, no. Everything has got like extra. You don't want that. See all these little guys? Right, all the venturis nah, and what you nah, don't want. We don't want that. Okay, so yeah, you know, I hunt, guys, and I fish also. And some, most of you should know that by now. Um, why do I mention it? Because as a hunter, you don't go kill a deer, for example, and only take its legs and leave the body there. You know, you, you consume as much as the animal as possible because it's the right thing to do, you know? Um, 
But don't worry about that. This rubber, this saw handle. You know, like I said, you know, you won't eat the head of a deer, for example. Um, you'll stew the head of a rabbit. Um, fish head soup, for those of you guys. I eat that. See, yeah, we eat, I, it? we eat it. Yeah. I eat it too. The fish, the fish head makes the best stock. Yes. So you try to consume most of the animal. Like when I go fishing and I tell the the mates when I'm a, I'm a, on a commercial boat, I tell them just gut, and if they scale, I'll pay them to scale or tip them to scale. But if they don't scale, just gut my fish and remove the fins and leave the fish whole. So there you go. So now the mixing starts. You start mixing the whole, the whole thing together. I need salt and pepper. What kind of salt? Uh, regular salt. Regular kosher salt. Yes, regular salt and black pepper. Okay. So hold on. Pepper is right here. Your pepper. No, you're never going to get the amount you want out of that. Okay. Here is your pepper and here is your salt. Okay. I got it. Go ahead. Okay. Right, let me just get a spoon. And for those of you who might be wondering why we're using plastic utensils and paper plates in this house, is because we are going... In fact, we don't have silverware because we do. But... Um, we got things going on throughout the house and washing dishes right now and silverware is not part of the plan. So what did you do there? You took a little bit of uh, you took like three te uh, teaspoons. Just a little bit of the time. Then you taste as you go. You know, you building it up to make sure you don't want it too salty. You don't right, want it so too what? You hold on. So what I saw is you took like a a, a tea, What is it? A spoonful of each. Because I did a little bit of it at a time. Okay, so this is a teaspoon. Right. Oh, where is it? That's a teaspoon. Yes. So she took a little bit of time, but she basically one of these with pepper right. and one of these with salt. Which, she, in other words, guys, she covered the top with salt and pepper. And then enough to cover the top, and now she's mixing it all in. So now I leave her at that. I put the lemon, put the garlic, put the celery, lemon, uh, I mean, oil and vinegar. Then when it's all done, then we taste it. If you need a little bit more salt, a little bit more. All right. You so hold on, it. hold on. You said oil. Vinegar. Vinegar. Uh, salt and pepper. Salt and, and pepper. Garlic. And garlic. Lemon. And celery. 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 And lemon. And lemon. Right. So okay. Now we need the lemons. Okay. All right, guys. I'm gonna get. I'm. I'm gonna turn this off for a second, and get the lemons, and we'll be back. Okay, so I cut up five large lemons. That's a pretty big freaking lemon, okay? There goes that on the floor. But here, get an idea, that's a pretty big lemon. And I want you to learn the method. Watch what happens here. You want a metal fork for that? Uh -huh. Oh, you go. Like, oh, she did get a metal fork, you <laughs> see that? Okay, so, before I cut the lemons, my mother-in-law says to me, I'm going to squeeze them out with a fork. And she says, because I like the pulp. Yeah, well, that's the way you get the pulp. Look how much lemon. Because I do have a... Uh, lemon thing. A lemon thing where you yeah. spin the lemon on it. Old-fashioned is better. So... Oh, for those, for those of you guys who might be wondering, well, what about the uh, pits there, Mr. Birdman? If the pits are getting in your way, move them out of your way. Do you understand? If you're going to stop eating because you found pits in your food, then you're a compromised male, and I feel sorry for your mother and your wife. That being said... As you can see, it doesn't matter if the seeds fall in there because they're part of the flavor. That is crazy, much juice. Wow. Okay. 
just be beside it. There might be a lot of lemon though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I would say. All right. That's all right. Use them somewhere else. Squeeze them out and put them in a bottle. She's going to need a lot more lemon than that, though. So. Yeah, no, I am. So there you go. So that's the method of squeezing the lemon because we want the pulp. We want some of that. By the way, don't be scared of the lemon. It's good for your skin. You know. Um, and then my hands are clean anyway. So. Well, no, it's it, not so much about being clean, but, but it's actually good for the skin. It uh, lifts, like uh, impurity. And, right, yeah. right. It's it's. Just make sure you have a cut. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. It's funny because I got some. I got a cut right here. And it's the worst. And it's right here. Uh huh. And some of the lemon just went in it. And you feel it. And it's reminding me that I'm alive. All right. So. Okay. So hold on. So hold on. So she used one, two, two, two of them you so far. You can still add it more like once, you know. We so, so she st she stops and now the garlic is going in. Because if you put less, you could have. If you put a lot, you cannot take it off. So. You got that wisdom? There you go. So that's the way it is, you know. Okay. You go ahead, but you cannot take it off. So. Uh, so we dropped the garlic in there, and now we're twisting away. Celery. And there goes your celery with your celery leaves. It comes to the party. Okay, hold on, hold on. So, it's not just any vinegar. We actually went and specifically uh, picked up this vinegar. You guys know that I'm not a label whore. It's a red vinegar, not balsamic. For the, in this instance, I'll show you the label. This is the company who makes it. It's called Cento. Cento. Mm -hmm. You fakes are gonna call it Cento. Mm -hmm. It's red wine vinegar. Cento means a hundred. <coughs> Did you hear that? Cento means one hundred. Now, why would they call that a hundred? Well, I mean, it's an Italian name, so Cento in Italian is a hundred. That's what it means. Somebody's last name, probably. Okay. You know? But they have so many brands. You could get so it now anywhere. watch what happens here. So you put vinegar. All right. It's and you're going to say, Bird, how much vinegar is that? All right. For the first step, it's that much vinegar, okay? Because as you can tell, there's no freaking measuring cup here. Nope. Yeah, I don't believe in that. I wouldn't even be able to cook with a measurement. I wouldn't even know what to do. Wow, you hear that? <laughs> All right, this thing is really starting to um, bring up the smell. It's another oil. Smell it? Yes, it smells really good. Oil? You want yours or ours? Uh, I think this is better. Not enough lemon there. Let me see. Okay. You got it? Yeah. Wow, yeah, it's great. <laughs> you got a ring too. Uh, now, this one. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Okay. 
Again, no measuring cup. That much olive oil. So basically, what's going to end up happening? So now, what, go ahead. You know what you're going to do now? Once I finish with all this, you're going to get a little, a little bowl, put a little bit in it, and taste it. See for all the salt and the vinegar and everything. It's perfect. And that's us. And that's his his favorite part of it. Yeah, she just had garlic, garlic in it. It's garlic in it. You don't have to taste touch for me. So I got 30, 30 plus years of experience. So now you can let me know if it needs like a little salt, a little pepper. Right. Yes, that's good. Well, guys, I know what it needs, but I don't got the balls to tell my mother-in-law nothing, especially in front of my wife. So I ain't gonna say shit about it. And I'm gonna let my mother-in-law decide. What is it? More lemon? Lemon. For Francis. Uh, you? I'm not saying nothing because I don't want to get bitched out. No, so, I'm not. I swear. No, 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 no. Hey, no. You are, you're having me on tape. I uh, no, I don't care. Wait, I'm so not telling you nothing. Another action might be okay. Maybe some salt, a little salt and pepper, maybe. Okay. Because, like I say, you you know, you 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 could put extra. You cannot take it off. Yeah. I actually think you need more lemon. Lemon. Okay. I think okay. so. What about vinegar and oil? Yeah, you, you 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 could bring it up some. Flora, taste it. You're not allergic to any other stuff in there. Yeah. Taste it. <coughs> build, build it, build it, build it the way it needs to be built. Happy. She's choking. I need a little bit of everything. Hey, if you guys didn't learn anything this whole video, learn that one thing. You don't criticize the person who knows what they're making. You let them because tell like you what I it say, needs. You could add it. You, if we would have put all these lemon, and right. it would have been too much lemon, then you're going to take it out. What are you going to wash it? Right. <coughs> so basically, because I've, I've been eating it for many years. I've been with my wife for a long time. And um, I know the end product, and I can tell you guys that it's a citrus vinegary taste. And the next day it will be. And crazy. it's um, it's followed by earth notes that come from the celery. Believe it or not, it gives it like this um, warmth when melted with the garlic. However. The key to it, in, in my opinion, after eating it for so many years, is that when all the flavors have a chance to marinate in the refrigerator, say 24 hours in, so like right now it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon, say like 24 hours before 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, say like tomorrow 11.30 in the morning, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, You'd have probably combined all the flavors by yeah, then. It would be perfect. You know? And you sit down with a loaf of bread and you get jiggy with it. There you go. More vinegar. And this is perfect now. So there you go. The vinegar has dropped. Down to that level. And the oil has calmed down to that level. Guys, the way it looks to me, it's like a, um, like a half a cup of vinegar. And right now it's like maybe three quarters of, a little less than three quarters of a cup of oil. That's what it looks like. Mm -hmm.
Now take the fork and put it a taste from here. See. It's going to be good for now. That's it. Good? That's it, guys. Doesn't need anything else? That's it. All right. Good That's job. the way I know it. Taste it for yourself. No, and no, I believe it because it's good. Here. Perfect. He's coming to taste test the product. The, the octopus that came, oh my god, so tender, I couldn't even believe it. It's right? Perfect. Right, you see you that? Go. Saran wrap, okay, the whole power. thing, refrigerator. We made Paolo daddy proud. If he would have been here, he goes, I'm with you, you did a good job. It's excellent. It's the way it always comes out, the way I know it to be. Um, if you have like plastic containers, you want to separate it or whatever seeds for you to put in, uh, oh, in, the fridge. in the fridge. Otherwise, you won't be able to. I want to thank my mother in law for coming out and spending the time with uh, me and my wife. And, I love it coming here, guys. So and, I love uh, you guys. Thank you for thank you. sharing the recipe yeah. and making the video. Yeah. All right, guys. I know, but they're not that big. Hmm? The Birdman says good morning. Bye, 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 bye.